What's up everyone? All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you footage of a portrait I made close to a year ago. I just found it and decided that I would talk through my process, talk a little bit about what I'm thinking about when I'm approaching a portrait, both in the beginning stages, middle stages, and at the end of the drawing when I'm trying to decide what makes a drawing finished, what makes it worthy of being put into a frame and put up on a wall. Um, this ended up being one of my favorite drawings. Uh, it is definitely not without its problems, but I'm happy to talk about that along the way. So right now what you see me doing is I am creating a bounding box within which I will place the central subject of the drawing. The reason why I start with this is because of the countless drawings that I have made where I get to a point where I really like the drawing, I step back, and I don't like the composition. Maybe something I'm interested in is going off the page. Or maybe there's too much white space. So what I like to start with is I create kind of, I envelope the main subject of the image. I stand back and decide, do I like the composition? Do I like the way it sits in the space here? So when I'm enveloping the subject, I'm also doing so in a way that captures the most essential angles of the pose or of the subject. And when I'm thinking about angles, I'm thinking about energy. I'm thinking about the spirit of the moment. I'm thinking about the story. If she were to tilt her head in the other direction, how would that change the energy of the pose, the nature of the pose? Would it communicate something different? And then here, what you're seeing me do is I am trying to probably place the line of the eyes and I, I really do want to take my time on this. You can see I'm checking and double checking and triple checking. And it's because the amount of time it takes to check a second, third, fourth, or even fifth time is nothing in comparison to trying to move an already rendered eye. So many of you, and just like me, we love to push forward and get to our favorite parts of the drawing. But the longer we can stay in this part of the drawing and, and hold back from moving into those details that we're so excited to get to, it actually shortens the amount of time we'll have to spend on the drawing. Fixing a broken drawing is infinitely more difficult than taking our time and slowly moving into a drawing correctly. And so because I've had to learn this the hard way over and over and over again in my career as an artist, now I've kind of learned that it's just not worth it to move too quickly. So here I am, I'm placing the nose. And I'm also thinking about the back of the jaw. And uh, at this point in the drawing, it may be kind of difficult to see what on earth I'm thinking about or what I'm working on. Um, but it's very similar to sort of structural framework. You know, maybe before a house goes up and all you see are the structural frames of the walls, it's kind of hard to envision what it'll be like, but the architect can look at that and begin to see the final product, even it's in its most elementary stages or foundational stages, I should say. And these are the foundational stages of the drawing. So you can see here, I am, looks like I'm constructing the width of the brow line. And I'm also framing the face with the hair. You know, some artists wanna build the hard architecture of the skull first. Me, I figure if I measure correctly, if, I, if my observations are sharp enough, then I can kind of draw it all at the same time. So I just jump in and draw the face, the neck, the shoulders, the hair. I treat it all as compositionally important. And of course, when it comes to getting lines correct, getting the lines of the face correct, far more crucial than getting the hair placed correctly because hair can move and it'll still look like the person 
you know, if there's more humidity in the air, the hair will lay more flat. So I might move through the planning of the hair a little bit more quickly. And we'll definitely get into, toward the end of this portrait, uh, a strategic approach to drawing hair versus hard architecture of the brow ridge or the nose. Here, what I'm thinking about is the negative space between the left contour of the face and the bridge of the nose. I wanna make sure I get that negative space correctly proportioned. I wanna make sure the tip of the nose is the correct distance from the cheekbone. And I don't wanna to go too far into the portrait without thinking about the gestural relationship of the neck to the head. I don't want to move too far into the portrait without getting the story of the pose captured. I want to push those shoulders up into a slouch. I want to feel her kind of hugging that pillow. So I really am going to take my time and think about what what if the if the line of the shoulders were to cross through the head, how high up or how far down would they be? A lot of students make the mistake of just assuming that the shoulders fall below the line of the chin, because they do when people are standing perfectly upright. But we always want to double check these these uh, angles and figure out. You know, it's sort of the opposite of a plumb line where we check things, we check different subjects' relationships with one another on a vertical line. I also make sure to do it on a horizontal line. So you can see here, I'm trying to figure out how high or low this other shoulder should be. And you can start to see that posture of, of the subject kind of in a posture of hugging herself, hugging that pillow sort of a self-comforting posture. It's all gonna come together or it's all going to be lost in finding those angles correctly. So I kind of disagree with moving into the eyes right now. Um, if I were working on this today instead of a year ago, I think I would probably finish the lower arms and the hands and the pillow before moving into the face, just in case anything needed to be moved around. But, um, you know, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do things. You know, as, um, as the amazing drawing instructor, Glenn Vilpu says, there are no rules, just tools. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, hey, do you, do you uh, use the Loomis method for drawing heads? Sometimes, not as much as I used to. It's a tool and I use it when I think it'll be helpful. Here, I clearly didn't use the Loomis method. Um, it's more of a method that I have settled into using. It's kind of a hybrid of a lot of different methods. And that'll happen with you as well with your drawing. The more you explore portraiture, the more you land on a style or approach specific to which tools you like to use. So here, these two angles are absolutely vital for creating the volume of the nose. And I'm thinking about it like a simple wedge shape. So I'm gonna focus on finding the flat plane beneath the nose in relationship to the flat plane on the bridge of the nose, in relationship to the flat plane on the side of the nose. Just keeping it as a simple wedge shape. And I'll move from the nose back to the eyes and continue to try to push that, those relationships at the same time. I don't want to get sucked into one part of the drawing for too long. 
because I will only get each part of the drawing correct if it's made correctly in relationship to other parts of the drawing. Often if I have a hunch that I've made a mistake, I will push other parts of the drawing. Uh, the areas of the drawing around where I suspect the mistake to be. Because often in pushing those surrounding areas, the pathway to fixing the mistake becomes much more clear and much more simple. Here I am finding the shadow underneath the lower lip. When it comes to drawing the mouth, the three most important landmarks are the shadow underneath the bottom lip and the corners of the mouth. The reason being the corners of the mouth are dimpled inward because there's an accumulation of muscles on either side and so many of the facial expressions come down to what the corners of the mouth are doing. And the placement of the mouth, the best anatomical landmark I've, fi I've found to use is the underside of the bottom lip. If you get that placed correctly and allow the rest of the mouth to sit on top of that point. It seems to come together a lot more easily for me. So, and it's at this stage of the drawing when I really wanna make sure I'm erasing any mistakes I find, any improvements that need to be made must be made no later than this part of the drawing. After that, you're just trying to fix something that was made broken from the beginning. And when it comes to drawing, often it takes a lot more time to do that than it does to just start over again. So, one of the biggest pieces of advice I have for new artists. Let this be this stage of the drawing that you give most of your time and attention to. I'm allowing myself to begin exploring sort of the wispiness of the hair. See if I can get all that placed correctly. But once again, I'm keeping this as light as possible. You know, I make mistakes constantly. And so being able to erase those mistakes and fix them is absolutely crucial. I've never understood this, but it seems like students always draw so much darker than the masters do. It's like they, they don't expect themselves to make mistakes. You know, I'm I'm planning to I'm planning for for the need to be able to erase any any stroke that I make in the beginning stages of a drawing. And I don't want to have to fight to erase those mistakes. I want them to come off the page easily. And you can see here that stroke is a little bit darker than any of the strokes I've made beforehand. And it's probably because I'm growing in confidence about the correct placement of my line work. Once you start to grow in confidence, then you can begin to place in the correct values. And so I think that this is a great place to stop for part one of this demonstration series. This being the first and most important stage of my process. Uh, everything that comes after this, far less important. This is like the foundation underneath a house, you wanna get that exactly right. If it's slightly crooked, the entire house will be crooked as well. So, all right, I hope this has been helpful. Um, and uh, make sure to click on the next episode of this demonstration where I will continue and finish this drawing.
So peace. Have a good one. As always, um, if you like this kind of content, please remember to like, comment, let me know what you like about the video, let me know what you'd like to see in the future, and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep uh, making videos like this regularly. So, all right, have a good one. Peace.